fellow students in this video we will start with the chapter changes that can be physical and chemical now what do you understand by changes now a change is the transition of any substance from one form to the other form for example if i talk about ice if i remove ice and if i keep it in room temperature it will melt and it will turn into liquid state earlier it was in solid state so that means what is happening the change is happening there is a transition which we can see in the same substance from one form to the other form this is called as what changes we will look what is physical change and what is chemical change now changes can be man made changes also like changes that are result of human activity so many things has been changed because of human activity for example burning of fossil fuel lot amount of pollution is created such changes that occur in our environment because of our intervention because of our disturbance into the environment that is called as man made changes now we see many man made material in our day to day life and we use it for many purposes we see many man made materials in our life for example air conditioners for getting cool air in houses offices and cars wooden furnitures made from wood obtained by cutting trees refrigerator to protect from uh, spoiling of the food so there are many appliances in our life and these appliances which are there all these appliances we have made to make our life easier but indirectly we have made lot of changes in our environment and all these changes comes under man made changes now some changes can be useful changes also and some changes can be harmful changes also for example if we talk about useful changes so many changes such as baking bread cooking food or useful to us so as it is useful to us we can use it in our day to day life so it is a useful change next is the harmful change so the changes that are not useful to us and it will harm us indirectly that is called as the harmful change now there are few changes which takes place very quickly and there are few changes which takes place after a long period of time so there are quick changes and there are that is fast changes or there are slow changes also so the if we talk about the duration of bursting of a balloon so it is shorter than the ripening of fruit so these changes that takes place in a short period of time that is called as the quick change so any change that takes place even in our environment like volcanic eruption earthquake landslide all these things takes place very fast so they are called as the quick change and if we talk about slow change so when it takes place after a very very long period of time then it is called as a slow change so this are the two types of changes that is quick changes and the fast changes now children changes can be periodic change also and non periodic change also so some changes which occur again and again after a definite interval of time these are called as the periodic changes and if i talk about non periodic changes so these changes will reoccur after one occurrence it will take a lot of time it will not occur regularly and even if they occur after a fixed interval only and such changes are called as the non periodic changes that is it will not occur very fast it will occur after a very long time it is closely related to fast change and the slow change so these are the two types of changes that is periodic changes and non periodic changes now if i talk about the example of periodic changes so the movement of clock if you see the clock moves very fast the hand of the clock moves very fast so this is a periodic change and it takes place after a fixed interval of time only that is one second after one second only the second hand moves so this is a periodic change it moves after a particular interval of time only then the change of season is also a periodic change for example summer then we have 
the uh, rainy season then we have the winter so this is a periodic change for four months there will be summer for four months there will be winter for four months there will be uh, the monsoon season then next can be the ripening of fruit that is also periodic change the fruit ripens after a particular time only then the rising and setting down of the sun is also a periodic change in the morning the sun rises in the noon the sun goes down so this is a periodic change only and they repeat themselves after a fixed interval their time does not change you will never see that at night the sun will rise because it cannot happen it is a periodic change next is a non periodic change for example if i talk about volcanic eruption we don't know when the next volcanic eruption will happen so that is a non periodic change the time interval is not fixed next is the occurrence of an earthquake we do not know that tomorrow an earthquake can occur or in some area the earthquake can occur or when the earthquake will occur it is not fixed then tsunami forest fires even the freezing of water from ice uh, in the ice form is also a non periodic change sneezing rusting of iron all these are the example of non periodic changes they do not repeat themselves after a fixed interval of time another type of changes is reversible and irreversible changes if we talk about reversible and irreversible changes so reversible means what the changes that can occur in a forward and a reverse direction again and again is called as what reversible change the change which if occurred you can again repeat that change that is called as a reversible change then we have the irreversible change the change which cannot reverse back if you have changed it you cannot reverse it and you cannot make it the same so that is called as the irreversible change so these these are the two types of changes that is it can be either reversible change or it can be either irreversible changes so we learned that reversible means it can be reversed again and again so for example what can we reverse it can you all think we can reverse what can we reverse things come on think uh, we can reverse a uh, wax that is melting wax candle and the original wax when the wax is melted we get it the wax melts but again that melting wax turns into the solid form so that means it is what it is a reversible change then stretching of a rubber or a spring so that is also a reversible change next is the irreversible change which you cannot repeat it for example if you have the paper and if you burn the paper you cannot again make a uh, paper from that ash or if we have wood if we have burned the wood you cannot reverse that into the wood so that means these changes are irreversible wood cannot be obtained from ash and even if you will talk about like if you talk about the natural changes so if you will see the green chilies which are there so once those green chilies turn into red you cannot turn the red chilies into green chilies again so these are the chemical and irreversible changes so now let us learn about physical change and chemical change so in physical change the material may change its shape or form but no new compounds are formed and also the changes they are generally uh, it is reversible and it is usually in the reversing condition next is the chemical change so a chemical change uh, produces new substance having new and different properties which cannot be reversed uh, by the re by reversing the condition if you want to reverse it you cannot reverse it in the chemical change so these are two types that is physical change and we have the chemical change Now, if we have to talk about the chemical change, so uh, in chemical change, it is permanent and it is irreversible, and the physical change is temporary and it is reversible. So, in physical change, as the new substances is formed because of the chemical changes, but a new substance it cannot be reversed back. For example, if I talk about rotting, if 
if rotting takes place it cannot be reversed back if rusting takes place it cannot be reversed back so these are the chemical changes next is the physical change if we have to talk about the examples of physical change so evaporation of water is a physical change boiling water is a physical change melting of ice is a physical change and chemical change for example the burning of wood or paper or the souring of milk digestion of food rusting of iron all these are the example of chemical change it is happening because of chemical reasons and these are irreversible now for example if we have to take in account while identifying the physical and the chemical change so for example if we have to identify a physical change in a substance so what we will look for so we will look for the uh, shape its size or the state of the substance is changed or not whether the change is temporary or whether change is permanent whether it is reversible change so if we have to look for physical change so it the shape should not of these substances whether it changes or not then uh, the temperature the, whether the change which is happening it is temporary or whether it is reversible these things we will look for a physical change in any substance if we have to identify a chemical change in a substance so we will look whether a new substance is formed or not whether it is a permanent change it should not be temporary and whether it is a non reversible change so we will look for these parameters to identify whether it is a physical change that is happening in a substance or it is a chemical change that is happening in a substance now you all must have seen that a rust layer is formed a brownish reddish layer is formed on the iron material that is called as corrosion so when an iron article rust a reddish layer a brownish reddish layer color of that is which is iron oxide is formed and this you can see on iron and if you see on copper so you can see a greenish layer is formed on copper so metals can corrode and this is called as the corrosion of metals this is a process which is called as the corrosion of metals so usually metals corrode so if we have to protect any metal from corroding so if it is an iron so when an iron article is kept for a long time it gets corroded due to the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere so iron gets oxidized to iron oxide and it forms a reddish brown layer which we have talked about that is the uh, corrosive material so this is corrosion and if we have to protect it from this because if corrosion takes place then the material becomes weak and you cannot use it further so an iron article should be given a coat of paint so that the corrosion is protected a uh, paint gives a protection to the iron material so if you paint especially if ships and all if you will see they are continuously in water so that is why ships are always paint if there are like uh, materials like iron material pipelines which are there so if you have to protect them from getting corroded we should paint them